Everybody loves LFOs, or low-frequency oscillators. They can take a stagnant sound and really make it pretty evolving or start to wiggle or start to develop or start to kind of explode in a variety of ways depending upon how we use it, what you connect it to, and how much it's influence, influencing it. But the operator only has one LFO. Now we could whip up some Max for Live wizardry and start bringing in as many LFOs as we want, but for those of us, for those of us out there who are kind of purists or simplists, or for those of us out there who like to just kind of discover what we can get out of just a single tool of how far can we push things, how much can we get out of um, tweaking this and that, and maybe we can use and abuse some things in some ways that they weren't intended to be used. So for those of you who find yourself in that category, something you might think is pretty awesome is the fact that all of the envelopes inside of operator can be used kind of like LFOs. They can loop or they can repeat at whatever interval or whatever rate we want to. So let's take a look at how we can actually use those. So let's start with a simple patch here in the operator. I'm going to start by turning everything off so we can off, so we can off, so we can focus, so we can focus. Just coming out of oscillator A, this simple, oops, record enable our track. Let's get rid of that reverb. Just a simple sign tone. Bring up the level a little bit. And this simple sign tone has an amplitude envelope. Right now it's immediately jumping up, decaying down over 600 milliseconds to the same maximum amplitude, holding that maximum amplitude until I release the note and taking 50 milliseconds to go back to zero, giving us that sound. But if I take and I grab the sustain and I pull that down, you'll hear the note getting quieter and quieter. Now the note is still sustaining. That oscillator is still producing the frequency, but the envelope has shaped this sound so much that now we've got total silence, even if I bring up this volume a little bit more. So we can have a lot of complexities just with the simple ADSR envelope. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the details view here of the operator, you see that we have this loop option here. And there's a couple different options inside of here. The first one, loop, allows you to specify in milliseconds or seconds how long you want it to take before this envelope re-triggers. Now kind of the catch with all of these envelopes is that if we've got it set to essentially zero, it's going to only still repeat the envelope at the length of the attack and the decay. So it's only going to loop this portion, the attack and the decay portion of the envelope. So if I sustain a note now, it'll take 1.6 seconds before it repeats again. So I could accelerate that. Kind of cool, right? We get into audio rate. We've actually got now inside of here an oscillator. listening to amplitude modulation or AM synthesis where we're repeating this envelope so fast that we're actually hearing the envelope as a sound source itself. Now your first question might be like, oh cool, can I play that as an oscillator? And yes, you could, kind of. So if we switch this back, and let's actually do a little bit of wizardry here. Let's get rid of the actual oscillator portion of oscillator A, and let's only use the amplitude envelope of oscillator A as the sound source. To do that, we could go in and we could switch into fixed mode, bring this down to multiply the frequency that we're setting oscillator A to be to be zero. But now we get nothing. And that is because of the waveform that we're currently generating, that it's re-triggering its sine tone shape here at zero, um, which barring you a long lecture on digital audio and how sound actually works, what this means is we've got no uh, 
sound to work with at this point. Whereas if we could catch it at the top of its waveform or the bottom of its waveform, we might actually have some sound. But here in the middle, we've got nothing. So to ensure that we constantly catch it at the very top there, let's go to a different waveform. Let's go to the square D. We've got this longer section, and actually where the waveform triggers is at its maximum value. A little bit later, it's going to switch to its minimum value. So now when I play this, trigger this envelope, right now we can hear we've got just a pulsing sound. And now to try and get different, um, different uh, pitches out of it, you might grab this key thing down here, but really this is only going to um, increase or decrease the amplitude of the envelope to, depending upon the relative highness or lowness of the incoming note. We've also got the option here of tying the time to velocity, which isn't going to do it either. That We're trying to get different notes out of this envelope, and I could do it instead by going to the um, global tab here to the key section here, and this is where I can set up where all the different incoming MIDI values or MIDI messages that I might receive with every single note that's flying into operator, I can route this or attach this to modulate different parameters of operator. So if I go to the key section here, I can set the key, so whether or not I'm playing a high or a low note, to route to time, and then increase the amount or the percentage that it goes to time, and then problem now is that as I play up the keyboard, it goes down. So to reverse that, let's go to negative 100. And now we've got at least some pitches, but if I try and play like a major triad, it sounds funny. It's not quite playing um, the notes that we'd expect. So let's actually find out what it's playing. Let's go grab our tuner and hold down a C. Strange, the tuner doesn't even seem to recognize. The incoming note. So I guess we are going to have to go the old school route here. Go grab our EQ8, drag and drop that onto the track. Span that out. Now we see the spectral representation of our sound here. And if I switch in the top right hand corner of EQ8, this little headphone icon here, this enables so that whatever band I have selected, it will solo out the contents of the sound underneath that. So if I click and hold on this while I'm holding, Then I can look in the bottom left hand corner and see that currently it's producing an A2 when I play a C on this. So let's go down and let's B2, C sharp. quite go so let's see let's go 5.59 5 so now when I play a C I get a C but if I play a G what do I get E3 yeah so it's not quite doing it but it is kind of close, and maybe this would give us some interesting results, maybe for those of us interested in microtonal stuff. Now I've got um, quite a few more notes to my octave than I had before, so if I play just a chromatic scale up on my keyboard here, we've got that, but also notice that I don't really have any sort of 
envelope now for this sound because I've used my amplitude envelope as my oscillator. So as soon as I release that note, it stops. So I'd really need some reverb in this case to make this. But that sounds kind of interesting. And what happens if I bring in oscillator B and I start to pump oscillator B through my envelope of oscillator A? That's actually kind of awesome. Maybe I get oscillator B to start looping. But this time rather than setting it to a millisecond value, I synchronize it. So if I try and if I select either of the beats or the sync options, it's gonna be synchronized to my project's tempo. But in the case of beat, it's not gonna be quantized to the pulse. It's gonna just be whatever that duration is after I trigger the note. Whereas if I select sync, it's going to be quantized to the pulse. So while I could trigger it at any point within the beat, it's going to maintain that relationship to the beat or quantize that relationship to the beat. So if I'm looking to do something that's rhythmic, sync is the better option. <laughs> Let's try maybe changing the algorithm. So these algorithms set, how are these oscillators connected? Is D feeding into C, C feeding into B, B feeding into A, all of which are modulating the frequency of the other oscillators? Or are they all feeding directly out? Or are they all feeding directly into oscillator A? Let's try that one and see if we can't get a more evolving sound happening here. So let's now bring in oscillator C. Let's get this one looping as well. Add a little bit of spread. Let's try bringing in oscillator D as well.
synchronizing that one. Last but not least, let's try screwing things up by going to our pitch envelope. And typically this envelope is mapped to the frequencies of oscillator A, B, C, or D, or the rate of the LFO. But if I turn this on and I disable all the destinations, destination A, and I go to destination B and I set that to time, this is wiggling this knob here. And this knob or this dial allows me to adjust, either increase or decrease everything inside of operator that takes time. So if I drag it up, things are going to take longer. If I drag it down, things are going to get faster. So if I just mess with this to begin with, <laughs> and I guess I had it backwards. So as I increase it, things take longer. As I decrease it, things go faster. So if I, rather than controlling that with my mouse, I use the envelope that's usually used to modulate the pitch or the frequency of these oscillators. I map that to time instead, having all of those turned off. Then I can drag things around and get kind of wild with this thing. Flipping it. Sweet. Now let's bring in the filter. Maybe let's go to the bandpass and let's do. Uh, analog model filter. And let's have its filter modulate that and let's have that repeat every bar. down a few octaves. Jump up a few octaves. Add a little bit of drive. Bring in our LFO, have that modulate maybe using a sample and hold that's synchronized to maybe every quarter note. And then let's have that go to destination B. What should we do with it? Um, maybe have that modulate the frequency of oscillator A. Can we do that? Yeah, here. Let's have it, I mean oscillator D. something else. Filter frequency. Cool. And then let's use its envelope. 
get its envelope repeating as well at uh, maybe half notes. Actually, let's go loop. Try a few octaves down. Let's go modulate this thing. Let's have it happen a little bit faster and let's make sure it's looping. Um, let's go loop at something. There you have looping envelopes and operator. So now while we've used this to create a really kind of crazy sound, you could use this in any situation. I mean, you could use it to get kind of a repeating 16th note bass line um, or anything that you want to have kind of a rhythm or evolving sound to it. Just turn on the loop, experiment with some different lengths and some different shapes to that envelope and see what you can get out of it.